Hi, this is Michael Pucciarelli. Tonight, I'll be talking about how I use light painting in Photoshop in my still life photography. But first, I'd like to give an introduction to who I am. I started professional photography around 2010. I got a social degree in 2013. In 2015, I joined Professional Photographers of America. In 2017, I joined the Maryland Affiliate Club of Professional Photographers of America. In 2020, I joined the PA, Pennsylvania Affiliate Club. Tonight's agenda, we're gonna talk about light painting information and techniques. Then I'm gonna have some light, lead light stroke diagrams. So help you answer any questions, clear any confusions. And then I'm gonna talk about how I use Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, and Adobe Bridge for my images in my light painting process. These are, these are some sample images. I'm gonna demonstrate how I did them. I'm thinking about entering in some of these in competitions to Southeast District. And these are some other images. I'm gonna also demonstrate how I did the light painting. And this one on a motorcycle, I used someone's studio. I used a different technique for this than the other three. If you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. This is how I do my indoor light painting. I have a small table. This is great for light painting anything small. And if you have a big light, I recommend light painting through like a white reflective scrim. And there are ways to use a scrim to smooth out the light. You wanna make sure you have a dark background to light paints. You also wanna make sure the room is extremely dark by turning off all the lights. And to get around in the dark, you use your LED lights that are turned on that help you see in the dark. And when you light paint, you wanna hold the LED flashlight at a 45 degree angle aiming at the subject. And you wanna paint the light going slowly back and forth. You wanna think of the edges and direction of the light it adds great impact. And later on in the presentation, I'm gonna have diagrams that'll illustrate this better. And the many ways to add light in a dark environment. I recommend using a small lid flashlight, especially for light painting anything small. You wanna use anything between 80 and 120 lumens. Larger lumen flashlights for anything small, I recommend that you light paint through like a white reflector to control the light. And you wanna do this for anything that's shiny so you get rid of that glare. And all you have to do is just have the right reflector in front of the LED light, the LED power light. And filters are great for small LED flashlights and they really help soften the light. They work well with any LED flashlight. And you definitely want to use the filters to soften the light. And you can soften the LED flashlights, even just with duct tape. You can create like a slit snoot for a tiny, you know, LED flashlight. And you can also soften the LED light with any type of plastic fusion material that you could use for a strobe. You could do the same thing in light painting for softening the light. These are my LED flashlights. I have a filter for all these on the left and I recommend using you know, this big one and this one, you light paint through a light white reflector. And these, and I have filters for all these. And I'll demonstrate filters later on in the presentation. And this different lumen power, this is 50, this is 80, could be 120. So the bigger the flashlight, the more lumen power. And this light and this light have very big lumen power. 
And like for big lead lights, like this one and this one and the ones following, I'd recommend like either a white filter or like a snoot snuck. And I'll talk about filters later, how I made them. And these lights were purchased at Home Depot or Micro Center. You could also order these online and plenty of online places sell these like Amazon. This is a big light. This is a very powerful light. It operates by batteries. These are the color gel filters. This, is, this filter is clear, but it's great for softening the light. And this is a great light holder. And these are batteries. And this also could fit on the horseshoe of your camera. And this cord I had to buy separately. But it's like 216 LED lamps. And the lights bounce at 56K. And again, you could use the cords or you could use the batteries. And on the back of this, there's like a power dimmer for controlling the light. This is another big light. This all came in one package. This is like the snoot snuck you put over the light to soften the light. And this light is composed over 600 LED lamps. And I always use the three prong prog. There is a VMON battery, but you have to buy that separately, but it works with a D-tap connection. And some of the batteries are more expensive than the light. And the snoot, the snoot snock's great for reducing the light at like three fourths of a stop. And it's great for light pinning soft. These are called foil filters. These are just pipes that I buy at Home Depot and I use a hacksaw to cut it. And what I do is I measure the diameter of the LED flashlight and go to the hardware store with the diameter of this hole, you match the flashlight. All you do is put it on the flashlight. And I recommend these filters for when you light paint anything small, even the big flashlight. And you help control the lights, and you light paint better, and Photoshop is easier. And the more you control the lighting, you're making Photoshop masking easier in Photoshop. That's a lot easier. And when you light paint a car, you definitely need a more powerful LED light. Maybe just that flashlight I showed on the other page. And I'd recommend using a big light, either through a filter or not through a filter. Depends on what type of the car you're trying to light paint. And if you light paint an interior, you definitely want to use a filter. But then if you paint outside, it's a lot darker, you don't want to use a filter. All you do is put the filter on the flashlight. And you light paint, you swing back and forth. Some people call it a pendulum motion. And you want to emphasize more lights, you go slower. You want to emphasize less light, you go quicker. It all depends on what you're trying to light paint. Depends on the texture. Some textures need less light, and sometimes you need to paint with a scrim in front of you so you don't produce a nasty glare. And some textures, you know, you need less light. And you want to think of the direction of the light. You want to use light from one direction and make your photograph easier to understand and you add impact a lot easier. You wanna think of the edges of what you're trying to light paint. And make sure that you shoot with a full battery, your camera should have a full battery. You wanna make sure you charge all your batteries. You wanna make sure you, all your LED flashlights work and all the LED lights are with fresh batteries. You have an extra set of flash batteries for the camera and also the LED flashlights and all three big lights. And to keep the camera still, I'd recommend using a cable release or a remote because you don't want to, you don't want to push the shutter button. You'll have, you'll wiggle the camera, then it'll come out blurry. So you want to always use a camera release.
These are what my LED lights look with the filters on. Look at the light coming from the flashlight. And you'll light paint differently and light paint better. And Photoshop's easier in terms of masking because the files will be easier to work with. And you want to avoid using an overexposed image because selection will be more difficult, but the image would also be a lot more difficult to work with when it's overexposed than regular exposed. And if you use a light, LED light with the filters, your light painting is a lot better. And look, these are the lights with no filters. And look at how different the light looks. The light's a lot harsh. I wanna stress again that, you know, Photoshop will be easier if you control the light when you light paint. It's always probably better to use these filters, especially if you light painting anything small than not to use them. And you wanna keep in mind what you're trying to light paint. What are you trying to get across? What lighting do you wanna see? This is my camera diagram looks for light painting. This is a camera Canon 7D. For indoors, I use aperture of 16 in bulb mode. Outdoors, I use aperture of eight in bulb mode. And then we shoot in raw for the most, for the most editing capabilities. And the standard picture style mode is the sharpest. In the metering mode, I only use evaluative because it brings out the most contrast. This is the evaluative. And this is the white balance, easily balanced at 56 or 5200K. And this is the S is the picture mode. It's the sharpest. In the drive mode, I always use single shooting. I don't use the H plus for the high speed. And I don't use the timer. I just use the single because I want to take one shot at a time. And the AI focus, it's great for nature still life photography in case the camera does move slightly. There's also El Servio, that's for sports, but I would just recommend using the autofocus mode. This is what I mean by a 45 degree angle, the light is aiming at the subject at a 45 degree angle. And notice I'm using a fill filter to soften the light. You could also paint, you could have a scrim in front of the light. And pendulum motion, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this is with the really, just with a small LED flashlight. Now, this is with a bigger light. Same principle, 45 degree angle and pendulum motion. It's going back and forth. I could also use the barn doors to tone down the light to make the light more narrow. I could use the power to reduce the light. You could also light paint with the scrim to soften the light. You want to definitely do that to take out the glares in the middle of the bike. Now I'm gonna talk, so does anyone have any questions from what I've shown in the light painting techniques and the diagrams? Now I'm gonna to go to Photoshop. Actually, I'm going to go to Camera Raw, then I'm going to use photo Lightroom, then I'm going to use Photoshop. First, I'm going to go to Bridge. I'm going to use this file. So these files, I use a LED light just to paint parts of the image. I 
I right, select the best ones. And then I put the selected parts in here. And these are JPEGs exported from Lightroom. But then I move the JPEGs. These are all the JPEGs and this is the master art file. Now I'm gonna to go to Lightroom. So basically what I do is I locate the file, go to import, I'm gonna find where that folder is. Then you click select folder, and then you click imports. Then I'm gonna to go to develop. I'm gonna just sync a few properties. I'm gonna select Control or Command A, auto synced. And I'm gonna sync the treatment and profile, the white bounce, the clarity, the sharpening, all the color features, the saturation, the vibrance, the color adjustments, and all the noise reduction, the luminance, the color. And I'm gonna put in the lens profile corrections. I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna correct any chromatic aberrations and the same process and calibration. And all these files are gonna have the same characteristics when I think centralize. Now when I want to export, I choose the file, I change the name of this. I wanna make sure Make sure that I'm using JPEG. I want to make sure that the color space is sRGB. Now there are other color spaces. There's RGB, and there's even more powerful than RGB is photo, pro photo RGB. But sRGB is great for posting on the web. It's great for correcting color cast. And then I click export. Now, I'm gonna to go to Adobe Photoshop. This is the master art file. And these are some JPEGs that I exported from Lightroom. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this. I like to use the object selection tool. You can use it as a rectangle or lasso. I'm gonna copy the file. Okay. I'm gonna just deselect all these layers because what I'm doing, all these layers I'm deselecting, these are just selections from JPEGs. And what I do is I, I copy the image over. And I come over here. What I do is I drag it over I try to make it fit in. I'm 
what I do is I turn it down. Wait. What I try to do is I turn this into a layer mask by pressing the Alt key or the Option key. Push this, I push this thing for mask. And I'm going to use a soft brush and the brush is very zero hardness and it's very soft. And I also want to start. You know, what I'm about to do is I'm about to light paint where the first coat is with your light paint in gray with the screen mode or the blend mode of a screen. Make my brush bigger by pressing the bracket keys, the French braces keys. Then the second coat of paint is with white, but I want to use a different blend mode. And you could try different blend modes until you get the effect that you want. The second coat of paint is just putting more contrast. And that's what I basically do. So we could throw this one away. So the first coat of paints, I start light painting in gray, but in a screen mo a blend mode of screen. And the second coat is with I, then I change the white and I use a different blood mode other than screen. So so I change the screen mode to blend mode to screen. I do I pay my thing and then I change the whites and I use a different blood mode. Let's use overlay and I do more painting. So I'm just, so it's two coats of paints. Anything complicated, I do multiple selections. So I first start in gray, change this, I start in, my first coat of paints is screen. And then the second, I do my painting. And the second coat, is whites, but now I want to improve it by using a different blend mode. And I paint. Again, I just want to start light. I already painted this, but I'm just going to go through the steps. First coat of paints is with the blend mode, penny and gray and screen. And the second coat of paints, you're light painting, you're painting in whites, but we got to use a more, a more attractive light. And I paint and sometimes Second coat of paints, I could just switch between blend modes to go the effect that I like. And then sometimes I just use a, a layer mask to paint in better to make it look better. And then I have actions. I have an action.
have some of this in action, some of this I don't, but the watermark I do. And some, and they also have other actions. Suppose I want to enter this in a print competition. And now I got to just adjust the size since the width is bigger than the height. I use IPC big width. So if then I use some filters I use some filters I use a speckle filter I take away small specks I use the dust and scratches. Most times I just use one, sometimes I use three. And then I do sharpening. Basically, I want to see when I sharpen, I want to make sure there are no halos. And I usually have it at 200 or 150. Then when you export it, I just export as a quick JPEG because I already got the settings. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert back to the original file by pushing F12. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to bridge. I'm going to go to another light painting. I'm going to go to this one. Talks, you know, it's about crackers. What I do is I do, you know, I light paint this. I light paint this, there's a separate exposure, separate exposure. And then I pick out the best ones. And then I put them in here. These are the best J, these are the best raw files. And the JPEGs go in here. This is from Lightroom, but then I move the JPEGs. And this is where, this is the master art file. And these are all, sometimes I produce it with water, no water, but the separate exposures are here. Then we go to, you know, Lightroom. Do the same thing. You want to import. I go where the photo location is. I navigate to where it is, then I click import. Computer's kind of slow, but we'll make up for that. Then I go to develop mode. What I want to do, I want to find like a gray.
I want to find like a gray. I want to choose Control or Command A. See what happens? Auto sync. Again, I'm going to sync everything you see checked. All the files will have these same properties. I click synchronize. Then I click export. You know, I navigate to the folder, I change the file. Make sure it's JPEG and make sure the color space is RGB. And there's many things we could do fancy stuff with the rename. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. 150 pickles per inch. This is what I used when I update my fine art store. I don't put the watermark in. And I just have a chart for the screen. I recommend just using the standard because sometimes if you use too much, like high, it'll come out too sharp and I click export. Then we're gonna go back to Lightroom. I mean, I'm Photoshop. Navigate to the folder. I'm going to go to the crackers with the Scott Riley. I'm going to go to the master file. Sometimes my computer it kind of freezes up. Sometimes you just wait a minute. Okay. I'm going to share my screen because I got disconnected. It's okay. Things happen. I'm going to go to uh, Photoshop. I'm gonna launch Photoshop again. Things happen. I'll share my screen in a few seconds. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So now I'm going to navigate to those cheese and crackers folders. And 
This is the master file. This is where I put the Adobe Photoshop and all the JPEGs exported from Lightroom. And all these JPEGs are single exposures of lead flashlight being painted at them. Now this is the master art file, but now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open up a JPEG. I'm gonna open up two JPEGs. Basically, I'm gonna just deselect all layers. So basically, this is what's called a bank, a blank exposure, where it's pretty it's pretty dark. And then what I do what I do is I turn it all the way down. Then Let's see. I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move it. And stretch it in place. Then I'm going to turn it into a layer mask. Make it nice and dark. And then I'm going to light paint. I'm going to use a very soft brush. I'm going to use a screen blend mode. This is the first coat of paints. Then I'm going to add another coat of paints. Then I change the color of the white. I'm going to use I'm going to use some overlay. I'm trying to bring a more contrasty with the um, color of white in a different like another blend, but other than screen. And that's what I do. I'm going to just chuck this layer. So basically, I start painting in gray in a screen mode, a blend mode of a screen. That's the first coat of paints. And then the second coat of paints, it's white and I use an overlay blend mode. So I change the color to gray and I paint in screen. That's coat one, then coat two, I change the color of the whites. I use maybe overlay. So basically two coats of paint. This is the first coat. You know, my paints, blend mode screen, gray. And then the second coat of paints And sometimes, yeah, I paint, but then I want to improve the characteristics. I use soft light. You know, there's actions for this.
G controls E to take back the change. Then if I want to enter this in, well, We talked about filters. I want to just speckle the photograph. Whoops, I got to make sure I'm the right layer. When you use these filters, you want to make sure you're on the background layer. The speckle, filter. Dust and scratches. Then unsharpen mask. Best time to that 175 to 200. I want to affect one pixel. This is a good threshold. It's seven levels, great for contrast. As I mentioned, this competition. Since the width is bigger than the height, then I'm going to push F12 to bring it back to the original file. I'm going to do a share. I'm going to go back to bridge. And this time I'm going to um, do, I'm going to do this another way. This is the bike. Got the solo parts, the stuck to solo parts, you know, I, these are the, these selections are the best ones from this folder. And then the JPEGs from Lightroom, but I move them to the master art file. And then I go to Lightroom, I sync all the properties. And now I'm just gonna go jump over to Photoshop. Basically, I do the same thing. Um, our shard file. And basically, the same thing. I, I have, and then I open up all the other JPEGs. Basically, these are all JPEGs. Basically, it's the same thing where the first coat of paint is in gray. Gray. The second coat of paint and that's under the screen blend mode. The second code is with maybe overlay and paints. So basically, the first code is this. Uh, I do my painting. I paint this. And I come over here and I'm out, I'm paint, the first coat is color gray, blend mode is screen. And the second coat I change here, I use overlay, I do more painting. And sometimes the second coat, I may use a combination of blend modes, but the first mode is always, it's always the first coat. 
And then this is the first code, do my thing. And then and the second code's white, but I want to use a different blend mode than screen. Now I'm going to talk about the last image. And this last one is a different image. I actually shot a motorcycle in someone's garage and I tried it a few ways. I tried the regular way. Then I decided to do something different because this is a hard thing I decided just to use one file. And I'd go, you know, I make all the changes, I work my way down. I also adjust here. So I work my way down and it changes. And then this is where I'm just using one exposure because this is very hard to do. But I just was lighting a light back and forth. And I was also holding it with my camera with the remote. And I'm gonna go to Photoshop. I was just trying to experiment and this is it. So this time when I decided to use one exposure, this whole thing is one exposure. This is another way to light paint. You're painting something complicated where where I'm just using, you know, I just trying to paint an improvements. One exposure. And I was just using one light. I tried this many ways. I tried this many lights, but I was there for two hours in this studio, but I decided to try all kinds of stuff. And it's just basically one exposure, but now I'm just, these are all the improvements. I go back to bridge. This is the reg regular exposure. But now what I'm gonna do, that's file 130. See, this is the original file. This is what I started with. And this is the finished product. So any questions on my Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom, or Photoshop? These are my Facebook groups, my Still Life Photography Creative Group, welcomes all kinds of still life. This group is growing every day probably over a thousand members by the end of the year. Another group that I'm in, City Shapes Architect Design City Group Group. And this group are only another person. 
F Star International Founder of Photography. These are my business links. You can follow me on Instagram, and yeah, LinkedIn, Twitter. This is my photo art website. This is my portfolio. Is there any questions? You, if you have any questions, I take them, or you could also email me at mpetrilliart2016 at gmail.com. Thank you for letting me do this presentation.